Hey, it's Andrea, the South African girl living in Canada. Um, today, I'm so excited. I'm chatting to Vincent Hayes again. Um, and we want to talk about something that, you know, is coming to us and specifically to Vincent is, you know, are you unclear about your tax residency status in South Africa when you come to Canada or any other country? So we want to talk about that today. Vincent, welcome. It is so awesome to be chatting to you again. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Thank you so much. Awesome. Fantastic. So you recently released a post um, on the six pointers around tax residency across your social media. I read it. I think it's important. I want to talk about it today. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. So what does it mean to be a tax resident in a country? Okay, so before we start, uh, just a disclaimer. I'm not a tax expert. Uh, so the, uh, the, the things I'm going to talk about is really in terms of my own experience as well and, mm. and how I've linked uh, clients to Canadian tax experts on this side here and also uh, tax experts and back in, in South Africa. And, okay. and the reason why I posted it was just because many of the clients that I speak to here are still very unclear in terms of the importance of that tax residency yeah. uh, that they need to file or the non-tax resident that they need to file with South in South Africa. And it's, and it's again, it's different from financial migration. So I just kind of, kind of, you know, when I speak to clients, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what, what does it mean? And, no, I hear uh, you. and so that was more the, the reason behind it. So in terms of tax residency, mm -hmm. you kind of by default become a tax resident in that country when you start earning income in that, in that country and okay. when you live in that country. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, when you exit that country, you have to deliberately tell the authorities in that country that you are leaving the country from a tax perspective and then there are obviously some consequences. Mm. So the things that we talk uh, to South Africans here about is very similar to any other expat that moves to Canada uh -huh. because it's kind of the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, so mm. you, you lived in one country, you earn income in that place, you moved your family to Canada, now you become tax resident here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's normally the same kind of issues that, that pop up. Okay. It doesn't matter where you come from. Okay. Can I be a tax resident in both countries? Yes, you can. So you can be a tax resident in South Africa and in Canada. So okay. when you move to Canada again, there's a residency test. And then by default, you kind of become a tax resident in Canada and you start paying income tax uh, on the money that you earn in Canada, as well as you have to disclose your global income, mm. worldwide income yeah. to CRA on this side here. Now, again, if you lived in South Africa uh, and you filed your tax returns there, by default, you stay a, a South African tax resident mm. in South yes. Africa. Uh, it's only when you deliberately go out and, and tell SARS that you've left the country from a tax perspective, mm. only then you'll become non-tax resident. Got it. So by default, you will become, you're kind of accumulating these tax residencies as you move from yes. country to country, unless yeah. if you stop the other one. What is the impact of being a tax resident in South Africa as well? Very simply, I need to keep on filing my tax returns in South Africa mm -hmm. and I need to file my tax returns in Canada. If I'm tax resident in both countries, then both countries want to know what my worldwide income was mm. in the previous tax year. Mm. Okay, so if, I, if I'm still a tax resident in South Africa and I haven't told SARS that I'm a non-tax resident, so I'm still there, mm. um, I need to disclose to them any income that I've earned in, in Canada yeah. this last year, um, worldwide income. And it's pretty normal you know, that countries do that. Um, and I think it's important for South Africans to also to understand that when they've changed the rules in March this year, it wasn't out of the ordinary. It was just kind of just catching up with other countries. Let's talk about that. What did they change? What, it was from the 1st of March, right? Yeah, yeah. What's, what happened? So basically just saying that if you, uh, if you spend more than 183 days offshore mm. and you earn more than 1.25 million rand, uh, you have to disclose that to SARS mm -hmm. and you'll be taxed on that in South Africa, mm. given the double tax agreements with another country. Okay. So what it kind of just means that if I, um, if I don't earn income in South Africa anymore, mm -hmm. but I still am a tax resident, mm -hmm. and only earn income in Canada, yes. uh, I will pay obviously my income tax here in mm -hmm. Canada. Yes. But because I'm a tax resident in South Africa, I still need to disclose that income in South Africa. Okay. Um, and that goes onto my tax slip in South Africa. Even if it's a zero income. Even if it's a zero right. income. Okay. But I would pay tax in South Africa if, uh, if, if the calculation is higher on that same amount in South Africa compared to what I paid in Canada. Canada. So you don't yes. pay double tax. It just, exactly. It, it actually like, evens out. It evens out, but they, you obviously bump up to the higher tax rate yes. if, if the $200,000, whatever, in yes. Canada is more than you know, the tax bracket in, Got it. in, South, in Africa. South Africa. So how do we become a non-tax resident in South Africa? And what is the benefit of mm -hmm. that, me being in Canada? Sure. 
Well, um, to become non-tax resident, it's really just go to go back to SARS when you okay. file your tax return yeah. uh, for 28th February 2020. Mm. Okay, mm. just to uh, it's physically you have to go on the form and say you're non-tax resident. Okay, so okay. it's pretty easy from that perspective. Okay, um, obviously there are a couple of consequences around that. What you know what will happen uh, in terms of the benefits? It just uh, practically it's just easier. You know, now in Canada, you, you run calendar year from a tax perspective. Yeah. Uh, in South Africa, it goes from obviously from March or all the end of February till uh, end of February next year. Yeah. So if you had to file tax returns in both countries, you have to kind of, you know, carve out 10 months here and two months in the next year and kind of just become complex, mm. you know, from that perspective. So it's a lot easier, tax mm. wise to do that. Yeah. Um, then the other benefits is obviously just um, when you file your non-tax residence in South Africa, uh, they will be capital gains tax. Oof. Okay, so that's yeah. just the important one to keep note of if yeah. you have assets other than retirement money. Okay, so that would be like property, property, right? Exactly. Will we'll accrue capital gains. What else accrues no, no. capital so, gains? So um, it's all your assets other than fixed property okay. and than. retirement assets. All right. Because when you sell your house in three years from now, yeah. uh, they're anyway going to charge you the capital gains tax on that property. Yes. So any other asset. Uh, you will pay capital gains tax in South Africa the day that you leave. Yes. Uh, they call it like a uh, exit tax, you know, yes, when okay. you file that last tax return or the, the financial migration. Mm. But what is great on that, Andrea, mm. is that uh, the way that you calculate your capital gain tax is you take your market value less your your base cost. Okay. And that's your capital growth. Ah. Okay. So mm. that's that's the place where you pay your capital gain tax on. Okay. But then what happens is this market value that you paid your capital gain tax in South Africa become your base value. In Canada, ah, okay. okay. So you create yes. that base again, and then anything above that, you will start paying capital gains tax eventually in Canada. Okay, okay so there's that benefit. Right. Yes, uh, of of fixing that base as quickly as possible in South Africa. Pay the tax, which is going to hurt you. Yes, but it, you you kind of fix that base as quickly as possible. Perfect. What are the consequences of keeping your tax residency? Okay, well, so obviously it's just complicated. You complicate your life, yeah. you know, to keep both sides. Yeah. Um, uh, before I answer just that, just quickly okay. that if you become non-tax resident in South Africa, yes, but you still earn income there, you will just file a tax return in South Africa for the income that you earn in South Africa. Okay. okay. So it doesn't, when you become non-tax resident, it doesn't mean that uh, that you're not filing tax returns anymore. Okay. It just it just becomes a lot easier. All right. Um, so the consequences of keeping that tax return or the tax residence in South Africa just kind of mean that you're not fixing that that base for capital gains tax. Okay. If you don't do that, and that's what I kind of feel really important for South African clients, and I always ask the question: Have you filed your tax? Re you know, have you filed your non-tax residency in mm. South Africa? Mm. Uh, and and that's just because that when you move to Canada and yeah. you don't do the tax residency, um, and let's say you you buy you know second property here and you have shares and companies, uh, in five years time, for example. Uh, SARS may come back to you and claim that difference in the capital gain tax Oof. because if you start growing your asset base in Canada, yeah, that's an asset mm -hmm. the way that South Africa would see it. Okay, got you. Okay, so any asset that you grow in Canada while you're a South African tax resident mm. still falls under the tax jurisdiction from South Africa, really. Mm. Okay, so yeah, if you then in five or ten years from now st start selling those assets, yeah, SARS could come back and say, mm, you know, yeah. where's my capital gain? Yeah, because got you. you're still a tax resident. Yeah, I hear. And so I guess, especially if you have businesses and you starting businesses in Canada and you have all of these things, tax residency is really something you should be considering, right? Exactly. Fantastic. So thanks so much, Vincent. That was really, really interesting. I hope that helped you. You can find Vincent and get more information at vincenthayes.com. Look in the description. I'll put all the information there. Thanks so much for your time Thank today. You. Great. Excellent. Thanks. Andrea. Thanks.